Today, in 2022, there is one Jewish state in the world, Israel. Now, of course, there are various Jewish communities throughout the world in a process known as the Jewish diaspora, which throughout history moved to other locations by exile or chosen migration. In terms of the Hebrew Bible, the term exile is used to refer to those who were, in their words, forced to leave the area of the ancient kingdom of Israel during the 8th century BC. Of course, that the Israeli state today is very different from the ancient kingdom, both in its creation and the territory it occupies. Although it is located roughly in the same area, but what if it wasn't? Throughout history, there were several proposals for the creation of a Jewish state, sometimes put forth by Jewish people themselves and other times by those who oppose them. In this video, I want to go through that list and learn about which other locations Israel, or whatever name this other Jewish state would have had, could have been in, who proposed them, when, why, how they would have gone about to build it, and why it ultimately ended up not happening, with Israel being created where it is today. Now, a quick disclaimer, this video isn't about the legitimacy of either Israel or Palestine to exist where they exist. I also ask that you be polite and refrain from discussing this issue in the comments. You're not going to solve the Middle East crisis by having an argument in a YouTube video comment section. Here, we're just going to objectively learn about these other proposed locations for a Jewish state with no other implications. I think we can say that throughout history, there have been about eight proposals for a Jewish state to be created in addition to the actual one that took place. First, let's quickly summarize how the current state of Israel was created. The ancient kingdom of Israel refers to the united monarchy of Israel and Judah, which at the time marked the national unification of Israelites and is dated to have lasted between 1047 and 930 BC. After the death of King Solomon, the kingdom would have split into two, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Since then, no other single state of Jewish people had existed, but then the Balfour Declaration was signed. A public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War announcing support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, although not all of it, then an Ottoman region with only a small minority Jewish population. The reason for the choice of this location seems to simply be its mythical and historical meaning. The declaration also stated that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities. It took some time, but after World War II in 1948, the State of Israel was finally created through the British colonial mandate of Palestine. Despite being the historical place of origin for the Jewish people, it seems the main reason why this specific place was chosen was because it could be. The British were sympathetic towards the idea of creating it and control the desired territory. But what if they hadn't been sympathetic, or what if they didn't control the territory? This is the point where we look at the other proposals for a Jewish state made throughout history and answer the question, what if Israel was somewhere else? Like I mentioned, there were at least eight proposals for other creations of a Jewish state. Some more serious than others, some more viable than others, and some taking into concern the well-being of the Jewish people while others attempted to do the opposite. Before going into each one, let's list them. First, the Ararat city in the United States, then British Uganda, British Guiana, the Jewish Autonomous Oblast in the Soviet Union, now Russia, the Fuku Plan in Japan, the Madagascar Plan, Port Davy in Australia, and the Jewish self-governing territory within Italian East Africa. It's also important to point out most or even perhaps none of these proposals were to be created instead of Israel or to avoid it existing. They were all made before Israel existed. Speaking of history, did you know that skincare goes back as early as ancient Egypt? That brings us to the brand that made this video possible, Teak Hanley. Teak Hanley is the brand for uncomplicated skincare for men. They help you start and maintain your skincare routine. They sent over some products that I've been trying out lately. You can see them here. I recommend their level one system, which comes with all the basics you need, a daily face wash, a two times a week exfoliating scrub, and an AM and PM moisturizers. My favorite part about Teak Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, 
product, how much to use, and in what order. They really simplify the whole process for you. They have over 5,000 five star reviews on their website from satisfied customers, so I think that's a pretty good sign. In addition to better skin, they offer their members more benefits 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, free US shipping, and you can pause or cancel it at any time. Because Teak Handley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click the link and get started today. So what are these alternative locations? Why were they proposed and why didn't they happen? Starting with Ararat City in the US. In 1820, a precursor idea to the creation of Israel took place. A man called Manuel Noah tried to found a Jewish homeland at Grand Island in the Niagara River to be called Ararat, after Mount Ararat, the biblical resting place of Noah's Ark. He built a monument there that read, Ararat, a city of refuge for the Jews. However, this was more the project of a single individual, and the idea didn't attract many followers, so he gave up and started to advocate for the creation of a Jewish state in the land of Palestine, then a part of the Ottoman Empire. Next, we have British Uganda. This project was known as the Uganda Scheme, a proposal presented in 1903 by Theodore Herzl to create a Jewish homeland in a portion of British East Africa. He presented it as a temporary refuge for Jews to escape rising persecution of Jewish people in Europe, something that had been a reality from time to time in the continent throughout history. Author Richard Zimler wrote a very interesting article a while back called Identified as the Enemy, or Why There Are So Few Jews in Portugal. Portugal is one example of how Jewish people were driven out by various rulers. At a time when some European countries were going back to this, the Uganda scheme presented a refuge idea. But when it was presented, other people who advocated for the creation of a Jewish state didn't agree with the location. Some others pitched the idea of it instead happening in Portuguese Angola, a thought that had existed since 1886, proposed by some as a historical reparation for their expulsion in the 15th century in connection to the article that I just mentioned, with Mozambique also being an alternative but neither were followed. As the British seemed committed to Uganda, Joseph Chamberlain even stated, if Dr. Herzl were at all inclined to transfer his efforts to East Africa, there would be no difficulty in finding land suitable for Jewish settlers. They ended up agreeing to establish it and even sent a delegation to prepare for the settling, but then realized the natives were against it. And apparently there were too many lions making it dangerous. This sounds ridiculous, but it's actually listed as the main reason for the failure. The British Empire had one more attempt at establishing a Jewish state before moving forward with the Palestine option, Guyana. In 1939, a plan to resettle a modest number of Jewish refugees in British Guiana existed, but was put on hold due to the start of World War II. The British government decided that the problem is, at present, too problematic to admit of the adoption of a definite policy and must be left for the decision of some future government in years to come. The reason why the first Uganda scheme was thought of was because of a persecution of Jewish people that was taking place in Russia. The Russian Empire was inciting violent riots called pogroms against various communities, namely the Jewish ones. This brings us to another proposed creation of a Jewish state further ahead in history when the Russian Empire was no more and the Soviet Union now existed. The Jewish Autonomous Oblast was created in the 1930s as a homeland for working Jews. According to Joseph Stalin's national policy, each each of the national groups that formed the Soviet Union would receive a territory in which to pursue their cultural autonomy in a socialist framework, something that didn't effectively happen, and this solution was more of an attempt to contain whatever groups they chose. Another important goal of the project was to increase settlement in the remote Soviet Far East. In 1928, there was virtually no settlement in the area, while Jews had deep roots in the western half of Russia and Ukraine. In fact, there had initially been proposals to create a Jewish Soviet Republic in in Crimea, but this was then rejected. In the Eastern Oblast, Jewish leaders were eventually arrested and executed by the Soviet state. Shortly after it, World War II brought the whole idea to a halt. After the Soviet Union was dissolved, most Jews in Russia moved to Germany or then Israel itself. The Autonomous Oblast still exists today within the Russian Federation with the same name, but there are very, very few Jewish people that actually live there. 
One other plan that is said to have existed, despite there being very little evidence pointing towards it, is the Fugu Plan in Japan. Marvin, Tokayer, and Mary Swartz published a book called The Fugu Plan in 1979. In this partly fictionalized book, they refer to memoranda written in 1930s Imperial Japan proposing settling Jewish refugees escaping persecution in Europe. They supposedly proposed that a large number of Jewish people should be encouraged to settle in Manchukuo or Japan-occupied Shanghai, taking advantage of the supposed economic prowess of the Jewish people, as well as gaining favor with the United States. The signing of the Tripartite Pact in 1941 and other events prevented its full implementation, according to these authors. But some investigators have stated that the memoranda used as a source was taken out of context, and there was never really any plan of this sort. One plan that did, sadly, exist was the Madagascar Plan. This was a plan created by the German Third Reich to forcibly relocate Jewish people from Europe into the African island of Madagascar. This happened in 1940 after the war and great persecution of Jewish communities had already begun. As victory in France was imminent, they believed that they would take control of all French colonies, including Madagascar. Their memorandum called for the resettlement of a million Jews per year for four years, with the island governed as a police state under the SS. The plan was not viable, thankfully when proposed due to the British naval blockade. It was also not a serious plan for relocation and seeked only to harm and ultimately destroy these people. But Germany wasn't the only excess power that had a proposal of this sort. Also in colonial Africa, there was a proposal for a Jewish self-governing territory within Italian East Africa. The Italian dictator's government in the early 20th century offered to resolve what they called the Jewish problem in Europe by resettling these people into a self-governing territory in their colonial possession. There was apparently a small Jewish community living there already in what is today Ethiopia. The proposed self-governing territory was to be within the Italian Empire Empire and would likely mean harsh and awful living conditions, thankfully Mussolini's plan was also never implemented. And finally, one other short-lived attempt was Port Davy in Australia. The explanation for this one is as short as its existence. In around 1940, with the support of the then Premier of Tasmania, Robert Cosgrove, a man called Critchley Parker proposed the creation of a Jewish settlement at Port Davy in southwest Tasmania, Australia. He went as far as surveying the area, but then he died in 1942, and this idea died along with him. So, those were the historical proposals for a Jewish state throughout history, understanding why this movement began, what the early attempts at finding a location were, and why they failed. Most of them connected with Africa through British, Italian, or Portuguese colonies, along with the Madagascar idea, but with other proposals also existing in the US and Australia, along with the attempted autonomous region in Russia. What do you think? Would any of these have been a viable location for the creation of a Jewish state? And are there any other proposals that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments. Remember to check out T. Hanley through the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you want and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.